The Grazadillo School of Business and Management at Pepperdine University proudly presents the Dean's Executive Leadership Series. This podcast invites top business practitioners and thought leaders to share their view on the real world of business. We're going to visit with Blake for a few minutes. I'm just going to start with a couple of questions and then we'll open it to the audience because I'm sure they have lots and lots of things they would like to ask you about. But uh, I'm going to tie what you just said back to Yahoo so we can have that conversation. So as you think about all the things you talked about here, as the kind of in charge of product development and product innovation at Yahoo, how are you trying to leverage the kinds of things you just talked about here to move Yahoo forward? Yeah, so most of the b- bunch of different ways. We have... Uh, Yahoo builds uh, massive data systems, right? So this this will this will come as a shock to you because you think of Yahoo as a it's a cute little homepage and it's uh, Yahoo has 720 million customers worldwide. Um, in some places like Hong Kong or Taiwan, we have 98 percent reach. It's a truly a global a global brand. We have one single platform that powers most of those 720 million users. And it's a giant uh, technology called Hadoop, which is an open source database architecture that is huge and scalable and can bring up all of that data and allows you to run ex- experiments, scientific experiments and algorithmic experiments on top of it and do things that are incredibly informative to the folks that are actually um, using the service. And that Hadoop grid actually blends advertising data, end user data, can actually do, we can do what we call data enrichment by taking Experian data and doing an overlay and actually doing really interesting, personal, meaningful things for folks. Um, Some of the the meaningful things that we do on top of that are about doing one to few social. So we're starting to introduce some some capabilities Mm -hmm. that are just starting to show up. And you know, all the things I talked about in terms of how we deliver, Mm -hmm. we deliver, have a big idea and then you increment. You deliver a little bit of it see how it's being used, and then you deliver the rest, and then you deliver a little bit more, and you know, the notion of version control or versions really doesn't have meaning in, in, uh, in the business anymore. You, know, you, you don't know when there's a new version because a feature just shows up, mm-hmm. and there it is, and let me try that and see how it works, and if you like it, it's, it's interesting. The, the other thing that we're doing in a huge way is focusing on mobile devices first. So most of the, most of the innovation that we've been doing are on mobile platforms, um, we introduced a, a technology called, this is no joke, called cocktails. Uh, there's two forms. There's mojito <laughs> and, and, and Manhattan, for, for those of you who don't like mojitos. Uh, and it's a, basically a, a technology that is HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, and uh, something called Node.js, which allows you to do unbelievably rich um, experiences on top of not just a, a, a phone, which people are expecting now with mm-hmm. applications, but across your TV, your, your PC, and any device. And because it's HTML, it doesn't have to be an application that's specifically for Apple or for specifically for Android. Uh, we introduced something called LiveStand in November, which is the first um, cocktails application. And it's a very rich experience that feels more like a, a magazine, or in some cases, a magazine with a video inside it, or a magazine with a, a DVD that you can touch and you can move through the video inside it. Um, and it, it's just a, a very different way that makes a, a vastly more meaningful experience than the notion of uh, web pages. And if you think about just the word web pages, they're not a whole lot inspirational about a page. You know, and web pages. But when you start actually getting experiential and start making things rich and beautiful, and it's not just flat, which most web pages are, and I'd say Yahoo's flat generally. When you go to Yahoo, it feels like, you know, nine, feels like 2000, right? Still flat, scales hugely, but most of the innovation that we will do won't show up on those pages. It'll show up in what I guess I'll call a parallel universe that is mobile devices, TVs, and yes, PCs as well, but you know, kind of think of it as a, in, the, in the background or adjacent to that, that will uh, make, well, I've shown it to, uh, I was telling you earlier, I've shown this experience to uh, the CEOs of most agency holding companies and you know, mar- marketers of Procter & Gamble and Unilever and a bunch of folks just to get their feedback to see what they, what they think. And, and because they have to advertise in this environment and it's very different. It actually takes the best of TV, some of the, the, the things that they've got in, 
in print and it combines them into one and it's interactive. And they just kind of sit back and go, uh, you know, absolutely amazing, I want to be in early, I, I, but I don't, I don't even know what to think yet. I don't know how to even conceptualize this because it's such a departure from what we've been doing with internet ads, which are little tiny squares that sit on a page and are meant to you know, have somebody dancing around on a, you know, about a loan application to get your attention, <laughs> right? Which has to go away. Right. So, lo- really long answer. Well, one of the other things you talked about as, as all this technology evolves was that one of the important pieces of it for the provider of it is the information that they get yeah. about the customer or the consumer. So, where, so issues of privacy start to come into play, and that's yeah. a big discussion going on in, in how much information should you get, how long should you keep it, what do you do with it. I mean, you were talking about the car, and I had this vision of getting into my car and it going, Linda, I think you've put on a little weight since you sat in this seat last time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how do you think about those kinds of issues? I and, think and, that's going too far. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm I would just agree saying. with that. <laughs> <laughs> but, a company like Yahoo, and how do you manage that? I, I do think that people's idea of what privacy means are shifting pretty dramatically, and our children will have a completely different concept of privacy than we did, than our parents did. Yeah. But how do you kind of map, deal with that as yeah. you try to figure out how to use these technologies in appropriate ways? Y- Yahoo is actually very, um, very active uh, in the capital mm-hmm. and have. Po- taken, I would say, a very pro-consumer position on privacy. Um, Quite a few companies have have kind of breached that. Um, You you can think of the names, but they kind of take a kind of a position where they go one step forward and then pull back, Mm -hmm. one step forward, pull back, to find out where the public um, is. Um, We've never done that. Mm -hmm. So we actually believe that the consumer should be in control of all their data that we don't get to say, look, we own, these, we own these photographs, these are ours, they're yours, you should be able to take them down, and when you take them down, they don't exist and we don't have them anymore. Um, sorry about that. Um, and you know, that, that is what the consumer wants. The consumer wants to be in control and wants to have a trust relationship with the provider, but that means that I want full transparency into what you know about me. I want to be able to monitor and change mm-hmm. what you know about me, and I want it to benefit my experience, not just my ads. There's actually a couple of laws that have been, one that has been um, in, in Europe has already been made, but won't go into effect until 2015, which is, I don't know if you've ever been on a, um, a website and you have an advertisement, and then you go to another website and you notice that the advertisement is either the same or similar. So there is uh, technology that, uh, that rests in the cookie, and uh, there's a, actually a, something called a cookie that every website has, and there are pixels on the website, right? The whole, the whole page is made of pixels. One pixel on that website can actually tell a cookie this is the exact same person that was on that site, and there are companies that are in that business. You didn't sign a terms of service. They can actually do a, a data overlay and actually get pretty precise on who you are. Um, they're not going to find your mail address, but they certainly will know gen- your general area where you are. Um, and, and frankly, the European uh, Union uh, said, that's not okay, mm-hmm. and outlawed it. And said so in 2015, if any of that activity goes on, a customer, a consumer, has to explicitly sign a terms of service saying that is okay. Mm -hmm. And the web today isn't isn't like that, as as you know. And so I think the the government is gonna push uh, in a way that I think is very, very appropriate. Mm Um, because, I, you know, I, frankly, I, I'm a big pro-business guy, and, right. and, but I, I do believe that in this case that some companies opportunistically have gone, uh, gone a little too far, and it's only benefited advertising. It hasn't done anything for the consumer experience. Mm-hmm. So our position is we're going to do things for the consumer experience in a big way, make sure that we take data, mm-hmm. let the consumer control it, and then tailor their actual content and media experience around that. So it's mostly about them, and their content, and then yes, the ads come along with it, but it's not primarily about advertisement, which is the way the internet has been actually grown over the last mm-hmm. you know, 15 years, frankly. Right. Well, I'm gonna go to the audience. What questions do you have for Blake? We'll start here, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, thank you, Linda. Thank you, Blake, for a wonderful presentation. I'm Armin from Jet Propulsion Laboratories, mm-hmm. and thank you. Um, so the, my question is, uh, can you talk a little bit about the uh, software startups that Yahoo's interested in uh, acquiring in the future, or some of the spaces that they're playing in. Sure. Yeah, no I, I insider won't give you, information I won't here. give you names. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so we, we, we like uh, companies that are, uh, I, I guess I'd say, that are in a consumer-facing business that we can actually use the platform to expand other businesses. So I know that's incredibly general, but if, and I, I can't even throw a name out because it just kind of throws the, raises the price. Um, <laughs> uh, Only if it's somebody in the room that owns the company, <laughs> then you can say. Yeah, yeah, it's surprising where some of these uh, videos and webcasts right. no, end I up understand. going. The, um, so we love companies that actually increase engagement. Uh, mobile companies are very interesting to us. So folks that are uh, iterating on mobile, if I use a couple companies that we've purchased recently, uh, one was Citizen Sports. Citizen Sports is primarily a mobile play, but it's a mobile play that actually attaches itself to social. So it actually allows you to do things on a mobile device and then broadcast out to your social network and then allows you to bring value back and allows the, an advertiser to get earned credit from being on this application and then broadcast out to a social network, um, which accrues value to them at a rate that's greater than what they actually paid for. There's this notion of purchased uh, value and then earned value, which is how good was your program and your campaign and then where did it go? So those, those guys. Another one, Into Now, which I talked about a little while ago, um, which is a great end user facing application, really pushing the bounds. We don't think it's you know, gonna be a billion dollar business uh, soon. And you said little company, so I'm focusing there. But we do think the technology is so important and they were so far ahead and they had patented it. Patented it, which is very important. Uh, so if a small company has actually patented and protected their intellectual property, that matters a whole lot to us as well. Um, and then just being able to take that capability and into now I can use it as an example. They didn't have an iPad app, they only had a phone. We gave them some more resources that can do an iPad app. We threw some scientists, uh, some data scientists onto that problem and basically now they can go do a TV show and go download into now tonight if you got a, an iPad or an iPhone and go listen to a TV show. It'll tell you what you're watching. It'll actually pull data out of that big Hadoop grid that I talked about that Yahoo runs. It'll pull data that's relevant to what's happening on the TV show right then. And if you were watching uh, the presidential debates uh, back in, I think it was when ABC was, uh, was doing the presidential debates pretty early on, Into Now was actually being used to form questions for the candidates. And it was making suggestions and pulling data out. It was wicked cool. Um, but that's the, that's the kind of type of company that we like to uh, acquire. And then, you know, big things too. How do you make a determination about kind of in terms of your focus and time on acquisition for kind of new products and growth versus internal yeah. development through the patents that you have and, and using the, the kind of expertise you have in-house? Yeah, well, you know, there, you, you're always looking at time to market advantage mm -hmm. and make by, uh, make by partner. Uh, and if you don't have the if you don't have the expertise in house, you'll obviously go out and right. get it. Usually, it, it very rarely starts with we have a patent in this particular area. We're, therefore, we're going to go um, try to figure out how, what the technology is around it. Usually, it happens in the inverse. We'll go build something mm -hmm. that is that either an engineer or a product management person had like a wicked idea mm -hmm. about and said like well, that's super cool. I'm going to go knock that out. And oh by the way, this is this application is patented, and then we'll actually try to broaden the, the claim to make sure that it, it is you know, adequate coverage and worth actually going in and spending the time and the uh, money to go get the, the product uh, patented. For small companies that we're, we're looking at uh, acquiring, it's things that we wouldn't have done ourselves. Right. Or it's an area that we think has enough synergy and we don't have the resource to do it. And then you're saying, okay, that guy's about six months ahead of me. And by the time I start on this and I move up six months, and now they're at 12, why, why spend that? We'll never catch up. And, why, yeah, yeah. Why, do you, why do you do that? And, and trying to get them at the right stage um, is, is really, really mm -hmm. important. You, you don't want them to be overly capitalized, and I'll tell you something about little startups. Some of the wacky capital structures of some of the companies that you, uh, you end up um, trying to acquire um, can be crazy, because if you think about the way these things start, Little angel money here, little mm -hmm. angel money there, first round of VC, maybe a second round, maybe a pullback. You know, I, there's all kinds of wacky things. So if you're an entrepreneur and you're thinking about that you want to be acquired, try to simplify your capital structure as, as much as possible. So when it comes time to, for an acquisition, they can actually look at the package from a purchase perspective and say, oh, that's easy to understand. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's, everybody's diluted equally or whatever it happens to be versus, my God, this thing is... 
I love the technology, but it's going to be an absolute hairball to, to deal with an acquisition. I'm, I'm not even going to start. So it's a little bit of, yeah. a little bit of that as well. Interesting tip for entrepreneurs. What else do we have from the audience? Yes. Greg? Uh, with all that complexity, and it sounds so great, you guys sound like you're playing around in a, in a sandbox having fun like a Google. How do you keep up with the branding of your image? Does that ever uh, get more complicated as far as uh, what your mission statement is, what your brand is, and then how does all this research affect that? Yes, yeah, so for those of you who didn't hear the question in the back, the question was about uh, branding and how do we consider branding when we're actually building uh, either building a product or a go-to-market, and how does that affect brand generally? And I'd actually say Yahoo has uh, an, a, a pretty strong brand, not not uh, not as strong as it once was, by uh, obviously, as it was a top top ten brand for mm -hmm. quite quite some time. Um, but the brand has been, has frankly, been tarnished quite a bit mm -hmm. just from all the corporate swirl that has been out. Like so, from my perspective, and I'll just put this out there since you're all thinking it. So. Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I've been in a company that has been uh, in for 22 months or so, and it's been in turmoil pretty much at the corporate level for, for almost mm -hmm. the entire time. And for some reason, actually, and this is a, this is a relatively known fact in the digital media space, um, a negative Yahoo story monetizes better than any other technology story. <laughs> so what do you think you're going to write about? And it's got tons and tons of readership. I mean, honestly, if there was a soap opera in the, in the valley... <laughs> It would, be about, uh, it would be about the company. So the brand from a perspective of, you know, in the valley you have and in, in some of the media, you know, folks that are in the business, um, the brand has been, has been haggard because the CEO was fired. We have a new CEO. We haven't disposed of Asian assets, blah, 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 all this, all this turmoil. So now leave the, the comfortable, um, you know, confines of the technology industry. Yahoo brand is unbelievable. Um, unbelievable. So we try to brand as much as we possibly can Yahoo. Now, outside of the US in particular, it's incredibly powerful. Now we know that for, from, a, uh, from the new demographic that's coming up on Facebook and Gmail and you know, the rest, um, we know that the Yahoo brand is old school. Yahoo, I remember that. <laughs> Isn't that purple or something? Um, and so we, we've got some, we have some challenges there, uh -huh. and we have some pretty interesting ideas on how to go address those um, in a way that we think that can create some, some pretty interesting lift, just besides doing you know, kick-ass um, you know, products mm -hmm. that make people go, wow, um, you know, we've, we've got to address that too. Because even if we do something that's just absolutely amazing for my 16-year-old, it's still Yahoo. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's interesting because it's really a very young company in the realm of companies and yet you talk about it sort of being the image being well, old school. It, it is, so it, it is, funny. is sort of a well, it, symbol so of the what internet's how the old world's like. like. We won't go into the Tim Berners Lee internet, but you know most of the folks are like the internet's been around like as long as Yahoo's been around, right? It's like 15, 20 yeah. years, you know. Okay, yeah, there was the ARPANET and there was a bunch of stuff happening before that. But you know, folks will say that's one of the one of the companies that, that started the it thing was, out, yeah. right? And you know, an Jer iconic sto you know entrepreneurial oh, absolutely. story, yeah. absolutely, and, and still is, right? And I actually I, I have firmly believe that the company is on, on a resurgence and we're going to kick some ass, take some names and have some good plans for, for doing that. Um, but 15 years ago, it was, you know, uh, the internet mm -hmm. for a lot of folks. And, and, you know, now there's so many other players out there who have done some very significant things and have captured, um, captured a market or a space that, was, um, that Yahoo missed at mm -hmm. some point. Mm -hmm. And so if I use social as an example, and Facebook was right time, right place, great idea, and had wonderful execution, and still has wonderful execution. Um, we have actually said, look, we're going to partner with these guys. Um, yeah, we have some other things going on as well, but um, we, we did an implementation of doing social on top of content, mm -hmm. and then we're starting to take that social connection and starting to break that down into small groups of folks that actually kind of pay off on what we were talking about um, earlier. You know, the, br the brand actually in that case is starting to attract mm -hmm. uh, new users. Interesting demographic. I don't know how many of you, how many of you are Yahoo users? Have you gone to, uh, if you go to Yahoo News with a Facebook login active, you'll be invited to um, share what you're reading, which actually puts a bar on top of your news page with all the folks that have agreed to share what they're reading from your Facebook graph. 
And on that page, you can actually see the things that they have been reading. If they don't want to, if, like back to the user right. and control point, if they want to eliminate something they were reading, we actually, they can go take that off. Justin Bieber didn't want anybody to know I was reading about him. <laughs> Therefore, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that article off and it actually gets pulled off my reading list and it gets pulled off the wall on Facebook as well. So we're working with those companies right. that have actually found some nuggets and are taken off um, to, to help us actually take advantage of some of those things and at the same time building a bunch of innovation inside the company mm -hmm. that take advantage of some of the things that I talked about earlier. But back to the brand question, which kind of started the riff. Um, you know, we, we've got to address some branding stuff with that younger demographic. And outside of that younger mm -hmm. demographic, in the US particularly, the brand is, is really, really strong. And oddly, in different places, represents different things. In uh, Taiwan, Yahoo equals uh, commerce, believe it or not. And it is actually, 90, as I said, 98% reach in a, and um, actually was a social network called Wretch for a while and a bunch of other things. So it doesn't represent the exact same thing it does here. Mm -hmm. um, in uh, Hong Kong, uh, Yahoo actually has the largest, uh, the, the equivalent of Groupon, much, much larger than Groupon in Hong Kong. And the way that, um, and actually a, an auction business bigger as well. So it's, it's a very interesting, um, a very interesting brand that means lots of different things to lots of different people, depending on what country you're in. Interesting. Back here at sure. the back. Uh, you know, hey, Andrew. Uh, oh, okay. Hey, um, sorry. Can you hear? Can you hear me well? I can hear you okay, fine. Um, so you know, obviously, uh, we talked a lot about the, uh, the implications on business and even I think our some of our personal relationships uh, of the advancement of the internet and technology in general. Uh, I think uh, one of the interesting side effects that Mm -hmm. sort of globalization um, and actually taking that a step further you know, what you think your responsibilities are as someone who is sort of shepherd of this technology um, to try and you know, apply maybe the same uh, commitment from, from a business perspective towards uh, helping enact some of those changes or, or some of that positive information. World good. peace, can you solve that for us? <laughs> <laughs> like. Uh, it, no, it's, it's interesting. It's a great question. The, the, yeah. uh, the, the, the notion of the democratization of the web has been around uh, since Jack Welch was saying it's for big business and it's unbelievable for big business. Um, we, we were talking about democratization of the web when I was you know, doing MSN Messenger 12 years ago. And it was all about empowering people to express themselves to as many people as they possibly could. Um, I believe as um, somebody who builds internet technology, our job is to create the most open environment, open platform that allows communication to move at speeds never seen before. And I didn't mention uh, the Arab Spring as in the notion of that everyone in this room is a publisher. But because everybody is a publisher and can have in, you know, near infinite readership, or certainly up to seven billion, whatever the planet's population happens to be, um, you can, as an individual, you can change the world. Um, my job is to actually build as many things that allow that to happen um, as possible. And frankly, from my perception, uh, is to try to keep um, government out as, as much as I possibly can and empower people as much as we empower business. Um, I, I will tell you, there was a, we had a very interesting thing happen when we were um, during, during the uh, Arab Spring. And I forget what country we were actually looking at internet traffic on. And of course we do, you know, we're a data company. So we do massive amounts of data scrubbing on every country we do business in. We keep tight analytics on how many users are coming to our sites, what they're doing on those sites. And we monitor traffic. And um, 
And in Egypt, we had a spike and it was going like this. Boom. And it went to zero. What, what happened? Government, Government shut, it shut it off, right? Because they were afraid of the proletariat, you know, frankly. Um, and you know, the, the power of the internet, you know, and I talked about the power of small business, the power of, it's the power of the person. I mean, that's, that's why you have engineers and frankly, one of the reasons I'm so hopped up about what I do is because it enables, it enables a 14 year old kid to be a publisher to millions, you know, and, and to maybe have a story that's more important than um, the top paid journalist in the world. And that's the power of the technology. Or I think you know, my, my job is to make it available as broadly as possible and then and hope we, uh, we use it as it's, as it's supposed to be. Well, it's interesting because we, as a business school, we tend to talk a lot about the internet as a tool for business, but it may actually be more impactful or as important for the social change that it can bring about as a Without mechanism question. for that. Without so question. it's really, this whole, the whole Arab Spring has been just an amazing way to see that. Well, uh, even- In a very uh, profound way. Even the pre presidential debates have been amazing. Now, if, if you were just getting your information uh, on the internet, you'd swear to God, Ron Paul was leading the, the <laughs> charge of the Republican <laughs> Party. Um, because, because his followers are so young Mm -hmm. and so vigilant and published like crazy mm -hmm. on an environment that is not controlled by an advertising sponsored media. Mm -hmm. And it's a very interesting phenomena that I think we'll see um, change the world in very significant ways. And you know, you've got Arab Spring happening, you've got things that are, I, I, I just got back from China and India um, uh, last, I guess it was a week before last, it gets a little confusing. And we've, we have six languages of mail that we're doing there, six languages in, in India, six languages, uh, Indian languages, in it, mail, uh, messenger, uh, other, other products that we're doing, newspapers, etc. Because you know, most of India is actually not in the big cities. It's in small villages that live outside. And you know, there's, I, I, there are so many different languages that exist that we're actually trying to empower those folks to get more information to provide more information, to communicate with others in ways that, and, and frankly, some of those things, they're, they don't monetize, right? They, you're not gonna make money in those markets, but you're gonna empower folks and to go in early to say, look, we're gonna go and do the right thing here. And you know, eventually, this, this will become uh, an economic opportunity. And you, know, you can't go in there with physical goods and services unless you're gonna you know, pay hugely. And you know, for, for an internet company, you can do things to, in, in places that it doesn't make sense for John Deere or CAT or, you know, or P&G in some cases. We probably have time for one more question. So, yes. Hey, Chris. Thanks for coming, Blake. Um, I hey, have a question on a topic that I didn't hear tonight much about, and that would be the uh, connected television. And I'm wondering what the role of Yahoo and other big publishers are gonna be like that in the future. And is it gonna be a compete or a complement with the existing national broadcast and cable channels that exist now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the most brevity I'll have all night. Um, there are two different plays that are start, sort of making their way um, through the market right now. One is a direct frontal attack um, saying, we're gonna do video over the top, we're gonna take ownership of this, it's all gonna be IP served, and you, don't, you can just ditch your old TV signal, those networks don't matter, you can get all the stuff you want, pay as you go. Um, that's happening, it's happening now. And I know, Chris, you know that, but it's, it's going on. Um, there are companies that I can't mention because I'm under NDA that are building out infrastructure to make that building out unicast infrastructure so you can have high fidelity bandwidth to your home that is as good as any cable channel and it's only to you, right? And it's unbelievably you know, crisp, it's, it's quality monitored, it's amazing and you can buy anything you want as you go and it's all the content that's licensed. You can use, even if you use Hulu as an example as a you know, potential over the top experience, not the guys that I was talking about. There's another view um, 
that is very complimentary. And frankly, Yahoo's in this position of doing the complimentary thing. We also do a ton of original programming on, that's primarily viewed on, on mobile devices and PCs. Um, and we have, uh, in fact, at CES this year, which is a computer electronics show that takes place in Vegas every January that I hate to go to, for the record. Um, <coughs> sorry, I said that out loud. Um, we actually showed in some back rooms a technology that takes, the, takes what's happening on the TV set, uses that into now technology that I was talking about earlier, shows it framed over on the left side and does things that are out of a completely different database, can be completely different videos, can be different advertising that's targeted to the individual who happens to be watching it because it's connected to a tablet that's on your lap. And if you think about the TV medium, it's actually a one to a few, one to few kind of technology and the device on your lap is you know, one to one. The combination of those two things actually serve up some amazingly powerful opportunities where you can serve up individual stuff on a TV while it's for everybody else, or you can serve individual stuff on an iPad. And by the way, there's a statistic that is um, pretty interesting that most TV time now is spent with another device near you, by you, in use. Anybody model that in here? <laughs> Almost like, a, and again, no, not, the, not the demographic that right. is, uh, you'd expect necessarily. So that's happening in, in you know, very, very big ways. So both are gonna happen. Um, the cast of characters will line up uh, in probably the usual formation of the ones that you'll think. The guys that have a tendency to go right at the, uh, right at the industry and say, to hell with it, I'm going in and going deep. They're going to go in big. And the guys that usually partner will go in with a, with a partnership mentality. And you'll see even, again, you'll see utilities start to roll out that are utilities for video, like electricity, water, oh yeah, and video, by the way. Well, Blake, it's been fabulous having you with us and quite insightful. And so we appreciate you taking the time to Thanks, come Linda. back and be with us. My so pleasure. Appreciate it. So we have a gift for you, and we're also going to draw for some door prizes, so you've got to help me draw for door oh, prizes. Sure. So Thanks. we have a picture of the Malibu campus for you. Oh, beautiful. Just in uh, recognition of your time with us, oh, and so cool. we appreciate it. And uh, hope you'll put that somewhere, and you can everybody will ask you about it. And you can tell them about Pepperdine. Uh, I will. Wonderful. And let's see, we have door prizes. What are we going to start with, Phil? Okay, so we have. Oh, some of them are blank. Okay, we'll figure this out. And we have a a basket of Yahoo things. Okay. <laughs> Yahoo. I, I didn't know that. Actually. I don't know. It, it looks like a really cool blanket I in there. A... That one's blank. We're going to have to try again. Okay, hold on. Does it have to have a name on it? It has to have a name. So. Oh, a number. Oh, a number. Do I just call the number then? Yeah. Is that what, oh, I'm sorry. Then we do have one. I'm throwing that I'm one back sorry. in. I'm sorry. I'm just. 137995. Oh, very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. I'll let you draw another one. Now that I know how we're doing this. Okay. It's the numbers. <laughs> it's the numbers, not the names. What are we doing next, Phil? The two-night stay at the Villa. Villa. Yes. Two-night stay at the Villa. In Sorry, Malibu. your number came up on the Yahoo bag. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One, three, seven, nine, nine, two. Woohoo! Woo yes. Very good. A weekend in Malibu. There you go. Sure. Fabulous. Thank you. IPad ah, gift certificate for an iPad too. Nice. There we go. Preloaded within two now. There you go. One three eight zero zero seven. Oh, psych. Zero zero seven. I'm sure it's not a two. <laughs> no, that is a seven. I'm my eyesight is worse, but not that bad. Okay. Okay, we're gonna try one more. There's hope. There's still hope for you. One three seven nine seven two. Oh come on! Come on! Come on. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants it. 
137972. Nope. Okay. okay. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. We'll get through this whole basket. 138012. <laughs> yes! We have a winner. Phil will explain to you what you need to do for that. So, wonderful. Thank you so much. Wonderful having you with us. Thank you. So two reminders. We have videotaped this, so it will be posted on our website and the YouTube portion of our website, and you can go watch it again and uh, anything you missed and want to reflect on. And then we also did a podcast before, so it's an audio cast, and we talked about actually some different kinds of things than we talked about here. So if you'd like to hear a little bit different perspective, from Blake, you can do that on uh, iTunes as well. So we appreciate so much having you here. Blake, thank you again. Thanks, and Linda. March 15th in Malibu, Jerry West. So we're gonna change cool. topics a little bit, but it'll be great fun. Great to have you all with great. us. Have a safe trip. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.